my dad is from is from Argentina, and he's from a, a San Miguel de Tucumán. It's called. It's a, a state in sort of like the the northwest. And when my dad was eight years old, um, his father passed away. He died of, oh. um, I think it was throat cancer or something like that. So my dad basically grew up without without a father. And my grandmother had was left with like all these, you know, all these kids. So my dad and, and his his brothers would would work. So my dad was, I think, seven, you know, maybe six, seven, eight years old, uh, with a horse and buggy. Wow. Going around, you know, going around, and I think one of their one of the things that they sold were seltzer. Uh, oh, you're uh, kidding! But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he'd be going around the streets of you know Tucumán. Um, this you know little little boy, I can only imagine what he you know what he looked like selling seltzer. Uh, and he told me this really funny thing where he said, um, in Argentina you have kind of like uh, uh, where he's from is sort of a very kind of a small city, and then you have country people. And he, uh, I think he described some of the country people as, as not being very good. They, they couldn't really do like um, addition the long ways, like adding up multiple okay. things. Mm-hmm. So even as a kid, he used to use that for his advantage and screw them over. Nice. Um, <laughs> and it, wait, hold on. I got to go and edit that. Not even, <laughs> as a, not even as a kid. As a kid. My dad doesn't screw people over uh, like that. But I, it, for me, it's, it's such a – my dad, it's such a delicious history – because um, he's in his seventies, but he's not like uh, he's not ancient. Mm-hmm. But yet, there was a part of the world where it was normal for kids to yeah. work like that, and then also to have these interesting, almost comical interactions um, and get one over on the adults. Um, uh, so, yeah. what's interesting to me is that it feels like it's from another planet. Yes, uh, to a certain extent. I mean, there are you know, seven-year-olds who aren't allowed to do anything. You know, there's, there's I, one of the things I work on is trying to change laws and practices. And there was a, a mom in Kentucky who was saying that her, do- her, her son wasn't allowed to walk home from the bus stop, the two blocks, um, because the school uh, insists that an adult be there to walk them home. And not only is that a burden for any mom who has to quit her job so she can stand at the bus stop and walk her kid home, but what a an, an undermining of the human spirit. Not that I want all seven-year-olds to be um, selling seltzer in the streets and screwing over their customers, <laughs> but I think the fact that your dad could handle that shows that we are vastly underestimating any kind of moxie that kids have while and, and also treating them like everything has to be this lesson taught by us. Everything is academic. It's like yeah. there's so much that he learned, obviously, from being responsible and also, I mean, to a certain extent, I, I mourn for, my kids didn't have this either, almost a chance to be so important to their family. Mm. I mean, you know, this is not a kid wondering like, who am I? I'm just a jerk, I'm a nobody. It's like, no, by you know, bringing home that $5 a week, you're helping you know, put food on the table. And that's a very, it, it's tragic in one way that a kid has to you know, leave school and, and work so hard. And it's ennobling in that he is, he is an important human being um, with responsibility and joy, you know, the joy of helping out and not just being somebody who's given everything. Yeah, my my dad, um, he, he's a butcher, and we have a, a oh, family. Yeah? But, yeah, we have a family butcher shop in uh, in Spanish Where? Harlem, uh, up in Spanish Harlem, uh, Casablanca Meat Market, hundred and tenth between Park and Lex, and they're open. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Casablanca Meat Market and Infinity will be sponsoring uh, this uh, <laughs> this episode. Right, um, and Clorox. Wait, is it yeah. near? Um, isn't there a museum of salsa right there? Oh, it, there might be. Yeah, because yeah. uh, it's a, it's the barrio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so when when we were when we were growing up, we would you know go and go and work there every now you know every now and then. And looking back, like man, I wish that I had embraced that more. Uh, especially as a, as a, you know, I think before I hit my teens, like I wish I'd, I'd gone there more and, and worked. Um, cause I think not, not only, you know, I think definitely the stories that you could tell, um, there's, there's something that I, uh, w- when I walk by say a restaurant or even like the meat packing district, there's that smell of, <laughs> takes you of, back. of meat that it like, like, like almost like a putrid smell of meat yeah. that takes me back and I'm I absolutely love it and it's sort of I'm back 
at my uh, at my family's uh, butcher shop. But then also just thinking about it now, like um, the butchers, you know, they obviously get paid, you know, a wage, but but they, they get tips and, mm. you know, and what a what an amazing way to increase your tips than have three little little kids in the background helping to ground you, you know, make ground beef and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like like we were a boon for the workers right. there. You know, right. we could have. You were we, like th- dressing on the set. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, we were helping out. 